Hey guys, if you haven't been here before, I'm Emily and I work as a management consultant. So something I have to do a lot of is to keep track of tasks. Okay, so what you see here is my action and goal zone. So first of all, I have some things that I want to look forward to during the week. So just things to remind me of what I'm doing and just to keep me happy and looking forward to doing some stuff. And just a general quote. Then I have my focus zone. So this is today's activities. So these are just mock-up tasks because I can't show you my real task because that would be weird. But I have divided it into two different sections basically. So there are the quick activities, which are things that take less than 15 minutes, like more five or 10 minute tasks that you can do in between meetings or you can bash them together. Just things that go really, really fast to complete. So things like call Mark, sending the PowerPoint over to Anna, like those small type of reminders. And then I have my main activities here. Um, all of these are stored in the same Notion database. No Notion is awesome, so you can make these large databases and then you can filter things so you can just retrieve the information that you actually need right now. So um, here I store my larger tasks. So say that things here generally take like half an hour or more. It's not a hard system, so like fast activities and then main activities. So what I do with these is that I give them a priority. So the quick priority, the during meeting and the quick with a dot afterwards, they end up in the left column. And then the high priority, medium priority and low priority end up in this right part of the page. So um, I have these sorted based on high priority down to low priority and these are tasks that just take a little bit more time. So what I usually do is that I estimate how much time this is going to take. Like This is going to take one hour, compile all the data into nice graphs, that's probably going to take two hours and write a blog post about organizational development that I'm really slow at though. So that probably takes like two hours to make the first draft. So now I have an estimation of how long the tasks are going to take and then I'll just have to start from the top because those are the highest in priority and then low priority are things that, let's say that high priority are things that need to be completed on that day, otherwise it's a disaster. Medium priority, those are things that should be completed during that day but it's not the end of the world if they're not but like they're kind of urgent and low priority tasks are things that they don't need to be completed today but like I still want to do them so they have a low priority so if I end the day and only have low priority things left that's a good day. Uh, I have it linked to another database that you're going to see further down below but it's a database of all of my different projects that I have ongoing so I can basically connect tasks to a project. I usually don't do this so much because it's just a lot of administration but sometimes you want to batch things together and do one project at a time or just to more easily sort it. Then I add projects but I usually don't and then if the task has a deadline I also fill in that. So this is like the main focus area that I use every day and this is like where I do most of my work. I can toggle this back. Then I have my planning. So this is where the actual productivity planning for the week and for the rest of the time, like for future activity, comes into play. This is more productivity planning for the day so that I do the right activities and prioritize them in the right order. So the first toggle I have here is my weekly planning. And when I come back to the office or like the home office on Mondays, the first thing I do is that I probably have a lot of tasks laying around here in the no uh, categorization pile. So I have all of these activities like in this right column. Imagine, oh, here I've done a lot of things. I have this one here and then I'll just distribute it during the week. So this I can do on Monday, this I can do on Tuesday. And I have loads and loads of activities that I distribute like this. Okay, 
I usually do a little bit more thought into it, but you get what I mean. When I've distributed the tasks on the different weekdays, I also have this when possible. And those are things that they are not really a priority, but I would like to get to it when I have the time. There, there might be things that I know I need to do within like four weeks. It's quite some time ahead, but maybe it's a large task or I need to research something. Um, it's just things that I do when possible. So if I one day run out of task and feel like, well, I should do a little bit more work today, then I usually check these when possible tasks. And then I have the waiting for category, which are things that I'm waiting for people to get back to me about. So like Anders is going to call me and I need feedback on the communication draft I sent. All of these things so that I don't forget to check up with them if they haven't contacted me or they haven't sent something. So this is basically waiting for other people to send things to me. I really like having this waiting for list because it makes things a lot more easy and you don't forget things. So as soon as I send like an important email that I know this person has to respond within a certain day or is important feedback to get, then I usually do one of these waiting for things. Then I have my upcoming activities and I've filtered these and made some mock-up tasks here too. These week numbers are messed up because I'm using my original list here and I've just hidden some things so that you can see my work tasks. So some of these upcoming activities are the same that you saw in the today or weekly planning list because uh, usually I hide the things that are this week and previously and I only see things that are beyond the current week in this list. So the way I have it is that all activities that are before the current week ends up automatically in the weekly planning or today's activities. The activities that are upcoming that means things that are in weeks ahead of now ends up here. So basically when I do my planning sessions on Fridays, when I brainstorm all the tasks, I do it here. So if I just add a task here, like call Lisa, and then I can add it a priority quick. I also add the week that I need to do it. So if it's week 23 now, I can add week 24. So I need to do it in the next week. I can add what weekday I want to complete it in, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or the when possible, or if it's a task that I'm waiting for. I can add time, I can add the deadline, or I can add a project. I usually don't do that because I really like to prioritize everything when I know what day it needs to be on. But yeah, so now I have the call Lisa here in the list. So here I have a full overview of things that I need to do later on. And I had tasks that I know, like, if I need to do something in two months, I had it here too. So that way I won't forget it because it will show itself when it's time. Then I have this list. I'm not going to show it to you because I have all of my work things there. But basically everything that doesn't have a specific week that I've added when I'm going to do something adds, ends up in this to do when I have the time. It's kind of similar to this when possible because uh, this list to do when I have the time is basically where tasks end up that don't have a specific week when they're supposed to be done. So this list is just all of the other things when I come up with something like I need to delete my email archive folder. Not the folder, but the emails in the folder, obviously. I can add, add that there because it's not a priority. It's not something that I need to do soon. In the days before I go on vacation, I usually do a lot of stuff like that or just when I have a little bit of extra time. Then uh, something else that I have on this list are basically like things I have to access quickly. My goals, um, I have them here so that I have them easily accessible and yeah so it's just easy to to see them that I get that view of them every day. And then as I said before I also have my work projects here. So these are the two projects that I have ongoing now 
as you can see uh, these had titles below them that i'm not going to show you and these can be related to the tasks and just so you know what is included in a project i'll just do a new one here so then you can see title of project up here and then i have a lot of different stuff here that is not that interesting and then i have some things that i'm doing just to keep track of all of my projects and the first one is why am i doing this project like what's my personal motivation for it then i have a short description of the project because i know that in a couple of years time i'm gonna forget what the project was about and like the details of it so i'm gonna add that there then I have my responsibility areas, like things that I personally have responsibility for. The results that we reach with the project when the project is uh, over. Challenges we have had, what things I have learned, what feedback I have gotten from the project, and then just a short description for my resume. Because as a consultant, I do updates in my resume all the time because we send it to different clients so I need to have an accurate text of all different projects so I just do that here. So that is how I plan and organize my work and some aspects of my life but mainly my work this is how I do it so it's my full productivity planning method or process this is the way that I do it if you want more information on how I plan and organize my life you can check out this video to the right or some of my other videos on my channel I hope to see you here for my next video have a great day and a great week everyone